Hey, good looking. You're back Ooh. with VOR. This is it. Oh, this is Carl. I, t I totally thought you were talking to me. I thought you were calling me good looking. I, I know no one else is watching or listening, so uh, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I happen to notice your uh, microphone's up in the air there. It's just happy to see you. What can I say? Oh, yeah. Well, it's the mutual there. <laughs> like you know what? Even. <laughs> you know what I'm happy to see? Well, Mark Hamill's see. beard. <laughs> I Mark Hamill's beard. But uh, yeah, sorry. And don't mean his wife. He's not gay. He no. just acts that way. He's the theater person. Let it yeah, go. Yeah, and, and he's just gay for pay. There's a difference. He's he's gay for pay. <laughs> so. Oh God, I love it. I, did I ever tell the story about uh, oh, what's his name? The guy who played Freddy Krueger. He used to always talk about because him and Mark Hamill were really good friends before Mark Hamill did uh, Star Wars. Uh -huh. And like, I mean, they're still good friends, but like he was like pre-Star Wars, they were friends. And he always used to talk about how uh, Mark Hamill used to bring his dates over to his apartment because Mark Hamill apparently is like at the time uh, he still might be, but at the time was like the worst housekeeper ever, and it was Hamill? so. Yeah, and uh, apparently it was so bad that like Mark Hamill, like he was in this apartment and his his kitchen got so bad he actually just boarded it off at one point. <laughs> <laughs> like there was just like shit growing in it and rotting and everything. He's just like, nope. He just taped it and boarded it off. Like he literally boards and nails shut up his kitchen. So that's pretty bad when Robert England boards yes. up your kitchen. <laughs> well, I know like, Mark did it to his own kitchen. Like he's just oh, like oh you're kidding oh. he's just like fuck it I'm done with it and just like so he used to take him over to to Robert England's place uh, to go and get lucky with the ladies. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if he contracted Harrison Ford to Carpenter to come over and board up his kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be it would honestly be like the Star Wars universe like everyone knows each other and they've all had dealings even though they don't <laughs> quite know it. Yep. <laughs> Oh, uh, but no, Mark Hamill's know. beard. <laughs> I don't know, kid. This looks this job looks like it's gonna take all night. Uh, you have any coffee? No, but I have a friend. She's an actor. She uh she has a hookup. You know what I'm saying? We'll count Give you a little snow. bump. A little bump to get over the. A little edge bump. There. We'll call her. We call her Carrie the Bump. <laughs> Carrie the Bump. And I'm not talking about disco. <laughs> Carrie the Bump, right? <laughs> Carrie the Bump. And then she, he's like, and it turns out that her dealer's Mexican and it's chewy. And he ends up, <laughs> oh, I got you. Oh, I about made you do a spit take. That's great. I can't afford another mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's chewy. And then him and Harrison Ford, like, kick it off and they become best friends. And he ends up riding around with them when he's doing his dealings. Whatever. <laughs> Holy shit! This is this is the Star Wars fan fiction we should do. We should make a comic out of this. Yeah, they already had um, uh, George Lucas in love. We need this one, based <laughs> based on Hamill's shitty kitchen <laughs> kitchen nightmare. God, I love it. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, so he grew a beard, not in a hipster way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the pics are out there. And I think I just you know there's so much Star Wars shit and a lot of it's rumors and then they'll show like there's a lot of casting things where you know it's like ooh they got the chick from Game of Thrones I bet she's gonna be this character from this comic I'm like you know what Probably they hire not. really good people to be doormen all right just yeah everybody relax so like uh, what what do you think when you when you first saw, like what went through your head I mean, you like when it? I saw the, with, with the beard or like yeah. I. <sighs> I want to say the thing that I found really funny was that uh, he actually referred to it his, as his contractually obligated beard. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, so apparently, like, this isn't just him on a whim, like, I'm just going to grow a beard, what the fuck ever. Like, it's part of the story. And, I, you know, he he's the same age as Alec Guinness, you know, was yeah, I was the original that. So, like, I, I'm really digging it. Like, because I've been saying for a long time, I want to see him come back as this old wizened outcast you know, like, I really want to see him be the Obi-Wan, you know, and yeah. and it seems like they must listen to our podcast, and if so, hi, guys. Hi, JJ. Uh, keep up the good JJ. work. Uh, that, we're close. I call him JJ. Uh, what's up, Jays? Call him J. Call him Jays. Two Jays. Short Jays. What's up, Jays? Plural. <laughs> Jays. But, uh, yeah, Jays. I, I, I think it's really cool, and I want to see where they're going with it. I hope that is the direction that they're going with it because I think it would work really well. It's also a great excuse to get Mark Hamill back into the story without having to make him the star because as much as I love Mark Hamill, I don't want to see him running around as the protagonist for three films because he's... Mm -hmm. I, I like him as a support character. I, I hope he doesn't die in the first movie. I mean, he might. Who knows? If he does, I hope it's done well. But uh, I want. I want to see. I want to see like someone else take over. I want to see the young. I want to see the kids. I want to see the new force sensitive people that he. You would think he'd be training at this point, you know. Exactly, and that's you know kind of why another reason that I didn't get into the books as much because. Um, it, it really didn't advance the characters. It was the same people running around doing s adventures, having adventures that were derivative of everything that we've already seen, um, or throwing the characters into genres that aren't Star Wars, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm not interested in that. Um, yeah, I saw the beard. Number one, let, let's, let's just face it, I love Mark Hamill. I'm a Luke guy, but guy hasn't aged well. Mm -hmm. I mean... He's he's you know teen actor. He's a good looking dude, but somehow a little rough. So he's uh, he's lost weight. He's grown his hair, and now he's got the beard. And initially, yeah, it was when 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 I first read, like I thought he looked great. I'm like, oh my god, he's a total Jedi guy. But I'm still looking at him with you know Ed glasses, young Ed glasses. And then I read the part about him being the same age as Guinness, and. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are aging better than they used to. So that's that's definitely a, a, an occurrence. But on the other hand, it's so perfect. Like Lucas couldn't have written this better. Yeah. Like, waiting this long and getting the exact same guy to now probably become the wizened uh, Obi Wan character. And um, I'm really excited to see where it goes. I'm really excited to see. What happens to Luke? Well, how, is, how his character has changed? Uh, because, yeah, same reasons. It's not that I don't want to see him going around kicking ass. I hope he's in it as long as possible. I want him to be in it. But it, it needs to change. It needs fresh blood to mm -hmm. keep people interested, to advance the story. You need to pass the torch, not only for a brand and, and merchandising, but also just in terms of just traditional storytelling, which goes back to where Lucas was starting from. Yeah. New and, and also, it's it's a great way to bring in the new fans also. You know, it's ah. because I don't think a 20-year-old or a 15-year-old is going to go in and relate to, uh, what, how old is he now? Like 50, 60 years old, like around that age? Like, uh, 62. 62? So, mm. like, I, I don't think a teenager or an early 20-something is going to go in and relate with a 62-year-old a Luke, uh, Luke Camel, uh, Luke Skywalker. Yeah. You know, I... And and also, he's not going to be the same character. Like, if they're doing proper writing, he's not going to be the same Luke from the original trilogy. Yeah. He yeah. has to be a different person. He's seen stuff. You know, he he's... More or less killed his father. He had to deal with that, you know. He's he's had to deal with finding out he has family, but not the family he thought he had. He, all this stuff coming down, and and I really still hope that they kind of incorporate some of the stuff from the original ending from Return of the Jedi, because even though they're all there celebrating at the end of that film, who doesn't? Who's to say that Luke doesn't go off? You know, he's like, and he go, rides off into the sunset, sad and like disappointed because he's. He's won the war, you know. He's yeah. 
he now he has to transition from like this young kid like ah oh, I'm ready to fight and you and you even see that in the original trilogy he's not the bratty little kid from Tatooine exactly like, you know like by that last film he's like you know he's preaching to his father he's he's kind of a zealot he's a Jedi you know it's like there's a nice transition and he needs to continue that path and I really hope they do and I I hope there is like what I really want to see is like reports of like some Jedi's like coming out and doing some bad stuff and for some reason they think it's Luke returning you know it's like he's been gone for 30 years you know and like that and then he cool. comes back and he has this whole like I have Jedi you know and just in time just in time is this bad shit's getting ready to go down he's like oh bad shit's getting ready to go down would some Jedi help and then boom boom here here's his son or his daughter cool. and then here, here's this other person you know it's like oh here's some aliens that are force sensitive you know it's like you know, like, and then that's a good way to introduce the new characters. You know, what I mean, there's, totally. there's a, a lot of fun stuff you can do. So there is, and I, I think you know the way it was done in the books. Again, I haven't read them. Feel free to call in and correct me. I know you will, <laughs> but you know, it's just it was like business as usual. Let's set up the Republic. Here comes the Empire. Luke establishes the New Jedi Order, and it's basically the same Jedi shit that we see in the prequels. By and large, I have a school. Mm -hmm. I'm on Coruscant, but maybe that's not his way. Because where was he trained? He was trained from a crazy old guy in the desert. He gleaned as much as he could on the road trip from Tatooine to the Death Star. Um, I'm sure there were other Jedi texts that he amassed along the way. Probably, I assume, because he gained knowledge between Star Wars and, and Empire. Um, and then the rest of the time was from a freaky dude in a swamp. And if he's, if he decides that the best way to go is to keep it natural and have like a commune, in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. um, and again we're we're writing the fan fiction as we do it, but I mean, yeah, why that seems to make sense to me to have like, introduce your new character, have him sent to an, a really awful place because he's force sensitive and everybody knows it, but they don't know how to tell talk about it. Maybe the yeah. Jedi aren't popular anymore. But he's got to go meet Luke. Mm -hmm. And that's where Luke trains. He's like, no, training can't be done in a gymnasium in the city with your fancy robes. This is where it happens, on Prison World, or whatever the, yeah. whatever the fuck. Yeah, you know? in dystopia land. You know I mean? it's And the thing to keep in mind is, first off, once we get to it, we're going to have to establish that like time has still kept on ticking. Like, like you said, it can't be business as usual. Like, there has to be like thirty years of growth, like thirty years plus of growth onto this universe. You know, since the last film. You know, and you you got to keep that in mind. And also, we saw it in the prequels. The Jedi temples are destroyed. You know, so Luke yeah, doesn't. They're all really, condos now. So yeah, Luke doesn't have like holocrons and stuff. He doesn't have the Jedi teachings. All he has is like you said, what Ben and Yoda taught him. It wouldn't surprise me if, like, at this point in this film, and I hope they do this, there's only, like, maybe ten Jedi at this point. Because of that 30 years, how much time is Luke going to have to spend in meditation and learning and communing with the Force to actually rediscover the Jedi nature? You know what I mean? Also, because, yeah, go ahead. Because it's, it's, it's not taught to him. He has to rediscover it, you know? It's just kind of yeah. like a... It's like a martial art. Like, sure, you might be able to find some scraps and stuff here, but there's no one left to teach you the movements. You're going to have to gleam it from what you read mm -hmm. and, like, the pictures and, and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty much like trying to learn karate out of a book. You know, he's going yeah. to have to rediscover all these things that, you know, back in the days of the Jedi, like, they would have taught him, like, in two years. But it's going to make, it might take him ten years to rediscover all that. So, But to his advantage, um, you know, he basically he is the chosen one. Mm -hmm. He is the prophesized bringer of balance. Yeah. So whether that just means that, well, sure, I brought balance. I'm the last man standing. But he brought Vader, who thought he was a chosen one, the biggest badass, who had midi-chlorians off the charts, you know, the most force-sensitive person they've ever encountered. He, he not only defeated him, he brought him back from the dark side, which has yeah. not, not been done. Um and ironically, mm -hmm. using love and passion, the one thing that uh, the yeah. Jedi are all against. So, And I hope that they exactly. touch on that. Because right. that, the, clearly the Jedi were doing it wrong. I, well, I mean, it. You can't go full prequel Jedi 
Yeah. Because all, every lesson we, we've already seen in Jedi, and it's really easy for, sorry, the layperson, to dismiss Wormy Luke from Tatooine and not see that growth. But him facing fucking Vader and throwing down his lightsaber in a fight. I mean, as a kid, I'm like, that's boring. What are you doing? You know? Mm -hmm. But he's like, all right, you're, you said it. We're family. I'm not going to fight you. Let's yeah. fight him. He's he's the enemy. And um, so, but he also came around when, you know, let's, let's say, you know, he had two masters. He had Ben and he had uh, Yoda. And by this point, the Jedi had learned to communicate with the dead. And now he potentially can keep learning from not one or two, but at least three dead Jedi. Well, actually, you know what? His father. It's, maybe even four, because here's the thing. Uh, Qui-Gon is, like, they, they heavily imply that Qui-Gon, uh, like, what is it in the uh, the third movie of the prequels, they imply that Qui-Gon Qui talked to Yoda. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, so, yeah, and, and honestly, if you're going to learn from anyone... Those four are probably the best ones to learn from because Yoda right. he made all those mistakes. He knows what the mistakes were. You know, Ben all was of one them. of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. like and Ben was on the line there, and he he learned from Qui Gon, who was the guy that saw he saw where the Jedi Order was going, but he couldn't stop it. And then you had right. Vader, was the guy that the Jedi Order failed. You know, yeah. so like he really has both ends of the spectrum without going true dark side or true light side, you know, it's like, yep. we might actually see that mythical brown Jedi, you know, it's like the gray Jedi come out where it's like, it's not light side, it's not dark side, so, yeah. there's so much that they can do, I'm really hoping that they hit on it, but mm -hmm. that is going to be discussions for more shows in the future, because we gotta wrap this one up. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. So, so uh, if you want to see more of our Star Wars discussions or anything else, head on over to VR, VORradio.com. All of our contact information is there for the Republicon. And everywhere else that you can listen or watch us, just go over there and check it all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of geeky stuff. What do you like about, you know, geeky worlds? We got it. We got your Batmans. We got your... Uh, we're working on Ghostbusters show. Little, yeah. Little teaser. We're, uh, we're working on a Mad Max show. <gasps> That's it. That's actually next week. So that's right. We've got lots of stuff coming. So yeah. And if there's other stuff that we haven't talked about, but you want to hear, go to that website and uh, give us a shout. It's yeah. Head over to the Facebook group. Talk to us there. We're always yes, there. Sir. Cool. But meanwhile, we'll be back tomorrow. More VOR, more Star Wars episode seven talk. And uh, till then, may the force be with that ass.